Uh, I'm proud of the guys. What uh, a great uh, effort today. Great effort throughout the entire week. Uh, this is a big game for us, big game for our kids from Kansas and Missouri. And uh, uh, to be able to, to dominate um, the football game like we did, uh, really pleased. Um, I thought the special teams were the highlight of the day. Uh, we're really good on special teams, and we knew we needed to be really good today. Uh, and uh, we were we were really good in all phases and, and great job of, of blocking on punt returns and did the fumble on the punt. And um, we emphasized it a bunch and uh, we had great uh, great success and we had benefits from from all the work and time and effort that uh, our staff puts into it. So uh, proud proud for the guys, especially the Kansas kids, get the win and uh, we're going to enjoy it. And then we got to get back to work on Monday. We will start here with Karen. Hey, Coach, congratulations on a great win. Is there any more satisfaction in beating a rival by as many points and the way you dominated today? Well, we're, we're pleased because this was uh, – it's always a tough week because there's so much outside noise that everybody listens to uh, as well as, you know, alums and stuff that this is a big game. It's a big game for everybody across the state. And so I, I was trying to tell the guys to block out the outside noise and focus on the task at hand of, of us learning and understanding the game plans and then uh, executing those game plans. And so, um, yeah, I, I'm excited because uh, those kids worked hard this week and were able to get the benefit with a big, big win in, a, in blowout fashion. On Kurtz. Yeah, Chris, I guess with all the punts too, Philip, were you surprised that they continued to kick it to him, especially at the end of the half there? Yeah, I don't know if that's what they were trying to do. Um, but uh, we were trying to go for the block. We called timeout once we got the fourth and one and, and hoped that they would punt it. And we were going to try to go after the block. And then they had an illegal procedure. But we, sh we came, so they saw the block. And so then we changed it and said, let's uh, – Let's flip it to a return. And I told Philip, there's whatever seven seconds left. You can't get tackled. You got to score. And um, sure enough, uh, we did we did a great job uh, of holding people up at the line and then some blocks downfield, made one guy miss. And uh, that was a huge momentum uh, boost going into halftime. And what really changed offensively for you guys in the second half to get things going with Will and, and everybody? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, we challenged them. Uh, I didn't think we played very well in the first half offensively. Um, couldn't get into a rhythm. Uh, a lot of things uh, were not going our way. And we could have had a number of more touchdowns. And uh, for whatever reason, we didn't. And um, talked to the staff, talked to the players. And we just needed to settle down and play the game. And uh, I was really pleased with the way the offense responded in the third quarter. I think we had uh, at least two or three big drives. We were able to throw the ball, run the ball, um, and get, a, get some confidence and get some rhythm going offensively. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. You bet. Kels? When you see a guy who's kind of in the zone like Philip Bricks, does your face just light up when they keep punting to him? Yeah, especially when the ball's getting there. And, he, and we always talk, you, you have to get the return started. And typically that's blocking the edge guys or outside guys and preventing them from getting a fair catch. And so when he's getting it with five, seven, eight yards of, of space, he's a talented young man that understands blocking and understands angles and um, sets things up so well. And we work a ton at our punt return. Um, and so I'm, I'm so happy that – we were able to benefit from all the hard work and effort we put into it. Um, but, uh, no, he's a special guy. And the guys know it. When he gets a chance and the ball's in his hands, anything can happen. I also wanted to ask you about the offense in the second half. What was most pleasing for you when you saw Will and everybody else get going there? I think it's collectively everybody. It wasn't the run game, the pass game, the O-line, the wide receiver. It's everybody collectively getting better. We need to continue to, to have our quarterback have confidence and – um, what he did in the third quarter is what I have seen throughout camp. And, and uh, he got into a rhythm, got relaxed, made some really good throws, stepped up in the pocket, ran the football a little bit. We were able to get Deuce on the edge. We were able to do a lot of different things. We were able to get some more of our inside run game going, um, just kind of some downhill stuff, which was, was big for us. And um, so I, just, I was really pleased with what we did in the second half offensively. Thanks, Chris. Congrats on the win. Appreciate it. Thanks. Michael. Yeah, Coach, who are some of those unsung special teams guys that you don't hear a lot about? 
I'm sorry, I missed the question. Who are some of those unsung special teams guys that you don't hear a lot about? You bet. It starts with Brock Monty. He kind of he's a captain of our team and kind of runs all our special teams. Um, and he sets the tempo. Um, Cody Fletcher's on most. Ross Elder's on most. Landry Weber's on most. Tyler Burns is on most. Seth Porter's on most of those. Uh, I may be missing somebody, but we have a core group of guys. Uh, and, and it's led by Brock Monty that he's one of the, I told the guys in the locker room, he's one of the, for a kid that's not a starter, that's a captain. He's one of the best leaders I've ever been around. Uh, and uh, love the fact that uh, he challenges the guys as well. And he watches film with the players uh, as well, just without coaches to try to make sure that the guys are dialed into whatever the schemes are. And you give up fewer than five and a half yards per attempt, uh, four sacks, five pass breakups, just, Evaluate your pass coverage today. It was it was good. It, it um, I thought their quarterback did a nice job of scrambling around, um, and uh, we didn't know if that was going to be the quarterback, but we knew that he had a skill set to be able to scramble. I thought he made some really good plays with his feet uh, at times. They got a couple of drives uh, established and going in that uh, second quarter because of his feet, and so uh, I think we needed to secure our rush lanes a little bit and, and maybe do a better job. We. We, we fell off the coverage one time and they had a nice game, but, uh, um, you know, I, we played well on defense. We can play better. Um, we missed some tackles on a, on a fourth and two. They, they get four and we have him tackled in the back backfield and stuff, little things, but, um, you know, we're able to overcome it and we kept playing hard. Fitz? Michael just beat me to my question, but let me follow that up with, um, you got a lot of young defenders in, particularly in that second half. How well did they play? Well, we gave up a, a touchdown after the after the fumble, which we were disappointed about, and and um, uh, we probably we'll have to evaluate the film. But they're all young guys that are athletic and, and, and talented, but sometimes don't know exactly what the defense is or where to go or what to read and keys and stuff. So it's a great learning experience for them, and that's that's a hard thing. We're practicing those guys, but they need to have some live reps under fire to see how they do. So we'll have to evaluate it. But, you know, every rep that those guys get is a benefit. And kind of a follow-up on the special team stuff. When you arrived at Kansas State, did you – and knowing the the history, the tradition of special teams at Kansas State, did you kind of sit down and reevaluate how you approach special teams? Well – I don't know if you're asking if we didn't emphasize it enough or do. No, yeah, I mean, it, it seemed you weren't known for um, blocking kicks. And, I mean, right now, K-State, you guys are making a special teams play every game and nobody else is really doing it. It's just kind of carried on the tradition that you inherited. Well, a couple things I, I would say on that. When we were at North Dakota State, we were better than everybody offensively and defensively. So why would we waste a chance of roughing a kid? Right. We're here – it's much more competitive offensively and defensively. And you may not have an advantage on those things. So you better find a way to have an advantage on a week-in, week-out basis. And so we collectively as a staff said, you know what, we're going to put more time into special teams than we think a lot of people are because it has to be the edge. When, when you are – we're not favored in very many games. I, I don't know if you know that. We're usually the <laughs> underdog. So you better win on special teams. My previous place, we were favored by four or five touchdowns every place – we, every time we played and so you didn't need to have as dominant on special teams but our kids know that our ability to win that battle on the special teams and, and win that phase every week gives us a great opportunity in the fourth quarter of tight games thanks coach you bet we got four hands raised we'll go right down the road uh starting with john yeah chris was going to ask about uh, aj he went out of the game do you have an update on his status and what his situation is uh, I don't. They said uh, he was not going to be available for the second half, and it was 34-7, to 7, and I said that's fine, and I and, uh, don't know. We'll find out more probably Sunday or Monday. Okay, thanks. Karen? Coach, one more thing. When you have a young quarterback, like you were talking about how he got into a rhythm in the second half, but how much did it help him to have his special teams and defense score take the pressure off him so he could – relax in a game like this and get that rhythm? I think every quarterback loves a great defense and loves great special teams. And we need to continue to play complimentary football. What I mean by that is 
Um, the offense in the second half played really well to give the defense a blow and, and be on the sideline. And, and special teams complements both because it gives us a short field or creates a turnover or a big play. And uh, without question, I know that Will didn't feel like Boy, this all this pressure's on me to get this thing done. Um, and, and we took a lot of that off him because we played well on defense at times. And, and obviously, the special teams were the difference. Thank you, Coach. You bet. Jackson? Yeah, Coach, uh, you, you've talked about a lot in the past. Um, you, you've mentioned a lot um, in the past how you're going to have to grind out games. And uh, you're, you're never really going to be winning. You're not good enough to, you know, overlook anyone because you're not favored by a ton. Um, just I wanted your thoughts on what this type of a performance can do for your team's confidence. Hopefully quite a bit. Uh, and it's a game that everybody's excited to play every year uh, against KU. Uh, and they want to make sure that uh, they're continuing on the legacy that everybody that wore the purple before them did of how much this game means. And so I'm sure hopeful that, uh, you know, the, the success we had in all three phases at different times today uh, will continue to carry over. Um, we've, we're on to the next week is all we really can do. And, and we have a, a really tough opponent in West Virginia, and we just need to continue to get better and improve in all three areas. Thanks, Coach. Ben. Last one here, Mitchell. Hey, Coach, I think it's safe to say now that Deuce Vaughn is, has really proved that not only is he's not just a flash in the pan, he's now a guy who's proven to be a reliable asset. So what does it mean for your football team to know that week in, week out, that we know we're going to get an exceptional performance from this guy? Uh, well, we felt that all along as a staff, that uh, he was a difference maker and a guy that people would have to start game planning for. And we're finding more and more ways to get him the football. And, you know, he's pretty tough to tackle open field and, and with that much space and catches the ball, uh, can run inside, run outside. And uh, um, the players know that when he gets the ball in his hand, very similar to Phillip, some special things can happen. And uh, I know that uh, that Deuce is, is playing with a lot of confidence. And it's fun for a young player to have that much confidence, knowing that, uh, you know, we're going to find different ways to get into football. I think every week is an opportunity to, to show to the rest of college football what our team is about. So with you today with Kansas State, what message did you send to the rest of college football? Oh, well, that we found another way to win and, and we're on to the next week. You know, that you're only as good as you, as you were today and you've got to continue to prove yourself and uh, have a chip on your shoulder every week when you come out and play this game. If you've ever fallen in love with yourself, you're going to get beat. And we continue to preach to the guys and they know that we need to have our A game every week to have an opportunity to be successful. And if we don't, um, Monday through Friday, stack those great days. We're going to get beat. And so um, it's, a, it's a great win. We're going to enjoy it. And then come tomorrow and Monday, I mean, we're turning our focus to West Virginia and putting our nose to the grindstone and trying to grind it out. And one final question. Now, 12 straight times Kansas State has won the Sunflower Showdown. What does it mean to continue this tradition of success in this game? I want to continue it for all the people that have put the purple on. And that's the big thing uh, is it means so much to our Kansas guys. It means so much to our Missouri guys. And then when you get a guy like Justin Hughes that says, hey, you guys would do this for me if I were playing a team in Georgia. I'm going to play my tail off for you because I love you. And that's something that uh, our guys really – want to continue to carry on a tradition of, of excellence, a tradition of, of, you know, Kansas State football is the, is the program in the state. And that's what those kids want. That's what they believe in. And so uh, each week uh, uh, or each year, this game is a big, big opportunity for our kids from the state.